thank you for um, spending some time with me today. I appreciate it. I'm trying to just like touch base with a lot of the coaches across the country. One, to see how you guys are doing and then just kind of getting updates on how all of this is affecting you guys. Cause I know it affects us greatly, especially since we stream live events and then there's no live events. <laughs> Um, so we have to, to plan accordingly. Um, in the, the 36 years you've coached at, um, North Carolina, is there anything that comes close to experience? I mean, nothing. We were just talking the other day, even about our camps in the summer and, and we'd never not had our camps. It was the first time we had to cancel our camps, our June camps at this point. And so we've never had to do anything like this. And I think it's really been, it's a challenge for everybody. And, and I mean, I feel, I feel really fortunate just as a person right now. Um, I know so many other people are experiencing things, you know, with losing loved ones and things like that. And so it's just so much bigger than sport, but um, in terms of coaching and all of that, not having contact with your players other than through Zoom, with your friends other than through Zoom. Um, I've had to learn Zoom pretty quick. It hasn't been easy for somebody, you know, that's a little older. Um, but um, I've really, um, it, it's definitely been challenging. But, you know, I think the good thing about it is it gives you the opportunity to really reflect on so many things and um, how you can improve somewhat as a person, how you can improve your program, um, how you can be, I think everybody be humble and be friendly. I know I, I've been biking a lot. I like to bike. And so I've gone on a lot of bike rides and just how many people are willing to look you in the eyes, even though there's that distance um, to smile and say hello or give a little wave or something like that uh, as you're going by them. I think it's just made people more grateful um, for a lot of what life brings you every day. Oh, absolutely. And you talked about camps and um, I spent some time as a college coach, as a volunteer coach. So I know how important those camps are um, for kind of like uh, a myriad of, of reasons, but can you talk about how, you know, the cancellation of a camp or a season, how that impacts not only just your players, but your staff, um, your SID, everybody involved? Yeah, I think um, definitely for your staff, if, if for your staff that's supplemental income, um, that makes that difficult. Um, I think, you know, when you're looking at, you know, evaluating kids, that's, that's not happening either. Um, and I think, um, you know, just for our SIDs, they have to be more creative and how do you keep your program out on the forefront? You know, what can you do on social media um, you know, we can talk to our 20s and 21s and we can Zoom with them and, you know, you're, you're winding up talking a lot more to them where maybe during the season you might not have done that. But I think it, it creates a lot of challenges just for your athletic department, your program in general, to what can you do that keeps people's interest, um, that keeps the recruits' interest, that keeps interest in your program because your season was cut short. And um, so a lot of people are trying to find ways, you know, even how can you do community service still? Um, I, you know, I brought forward to our, our person uh, that does our student life stuff with our athletes. Hey, can we go out and read in the community into the schools? Well, there's no schools meeting other than on Zoom. And she said, actually, we were just talking about the possibility of doing that where, you know, a student can record you know, they're reading a book to that class. And so, I mean, people are finding just different ways to do what they normally would do. Um, if they were just going to work every day, you know, doing the recruiting, talking to the coaches, um, and 
um, being out on the field with the players. You're just having to find more ways to do what you do. Yeah, you spoke to a lot of things. And I think what a lot of people don't realize is that uh, this may feel like downtime to a lot of people, but for a person in your position or part of the athletic department, you're having to drum up all different types of plans uh, in the case of, you know, um, everybody being able to be back on campus by a certain time and whatnot. Are, are you and um, I guess like explain kind of how either your staff or the department is having to tackle the challenge of uh, building out different models or different uh, plans for the future of the athletic department? Sure. I think our athletic director, Bubba Cunningham, has been outstanding in informing us and keeping us in step with what's happening on the NCAA front, uh, what's happening from a budget standpoint. Um, are we going to have football in the fall? And football generates, you know, a lot of income and how that's going to affect our budgets. And you know, there's such a domino effect um, with everything, uh, even, you know, at UNC, just even in the hospitals, when you have um, off-site places and, you know, the money that they're not generating right now and the money that our departments are not generating and how do we, how do we come up with that shortfall? How do we schedule? Like for next year, for example, um, we originally were going to go to uh, Mexico to Puerto Vallarta, and um, we had gotten funds for that from the athletic department, and they told us to put a halt on international travel and try to find ways that we can have uh, compete and compete at still at a high level, but somewhere that's more of a bus trip, um, not looking to try to fly a whole lot of places, if, if anywhere. Um, so it's created a challenge to um, make your schedule as good as it can be within maybe the region, but having national competition. And so right. I think, you know, our department has really gone through, you know, the mental health pieces, you know, how do we keep our student athletes healthy? You know, what resources do we have for them? Um, how do we keep our programs again out in the forefront? Um, messages to our hospital workers, messages on Monday, it was student athlete day, um, interviewing coaches to send messages and how we appreciate our student athletes and, and what they do for, you know, on a daily basis um, within our athletic department, within our programs. And so um, there's so many areas that um, have to be talked about and there's so much uncertainty and unknowns that it, it not that it's hard to make a plan but sometimes like if you look at the NCAA they were allowing us to zoom with our strength coaches our kids and now they walked that back um, because of what's written in the rule book about staying safe and having supervision and so on well then if you think about what's happening right now in the mental health for the student athletes to try to keep normalcy for them, and, and you know as well as I do, you know, either exercise or having that contact with people, your peer athletes, um, I think that makes such a big difference in, in staying connected um, and trying again to have that sense, some sense of normalcy in an abnormal situation. And the NCAA right now is kind of rigid in that respect. And I understand the way the rule is written, but these are unprecedented times. And sometimes you have to take another step back and look at how does this affect these student athletes? And, you know, again, I mean, people all over the world are being affected in so many ways, but in this little tunnel of, you know, the student athlete sport world, um, being able to, um, you know, help these kids mentally have some sense of community 
and some sense of normalcy and some sense of just connecting with your strength coach or somebody. Um, you know, a lot of them are, you know, their parents are working from home. And so they have to go in their bedrooms, like if they're going to do a Zoom call or they're going to do their, because all their work now is online, right? All yeah. the professors had it get all their classes online and their tutors are online. And so it's a whole new world for everybody. Mm -hmm. Talk about uh, just in particular, your athletes, how are they doing during this, this period of time? I, I think they're doing pretty well. I think, you know, they zoom with one another. Um, we have a, a weekly zoom with them on Fridays um, we have, uh, within our group me that we do, uh, um, two of my assistants came up with, um, a 30 day type challenge, uh, that they weigh in on if they choose to, it's all, you know, voluntary if they want to do it, but, um, you know, maybe a, a high school memory that, uh, you know, with a picture that, um, makes you happy or, uh, maybe a song that um, you would like to sing a duet with. Um, what artist would you like to sing a duet with? And um, they can send in their song and then they can make playlists from that. But every day they have something, a picture that um, makes you feel like it's summertime. And so they would share that picture with the group. And I think what it's done is it's gotten us beyond being surfacy, maybe with, you know, hey, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? How was class? Um, you're getting to know um, your players better. I, I know I am, or your teammates better, um, because you know, you know, certain music they like or what they really like to do. They're out biking or, you know, one of our players took a picture of um, uh, out of uniform, but with UNC softball when we went to Puerto Vallarta and we swam with the dolphins, right? <laughs> Um, and so she had a picture of the Funny. dolphin, you know, kissing her or whatever. And so um, they're able to share those type of things where maybe we wouldn't be doing that because we're busy in our season, running back and forth to class, practice, traveling, those kind of things. That's awesome. Um, I want to go back to something you kind of mentioned um, uh, before this last question. You talked about how the impact of, of football over the entire athletic department. Um, do you foresee softball in particular doing anything in the case that that would happen to help kind of uh, help fund the program or uh, make sure that you guys are kind of up to par with the things that the student athletes need? Yeah, I, I think um, it's going to be so challenging. Um, I, and I think too, you know, you have to uh, also factor in the March Madness um, because right. the money that is distributed to the schools um, is significant. And we took a couple of million dollar hit as a university or as an athletic department just with March Madness alone. And so I think... Uh, we may have to have, you know, a lot more creative ways to um, fund our program. And certainly, you know, with people losing their jobs, you know, you have a, you have a home run club or we have a home run club and boosters and um, people are going to be losing their jobs or, you know, how is that, how are those things going to happen? Your camps and, and clinics also help sometimes, you know, fund that way. Um, I think we're all going to have to tighten up our budgets um, and see what's really essential, you know, how can we operate the best on maybe bare bones? Um, and that's our athletic director actually asked us to look at our budgets and see what we absolutely, absolutely need and what we absolutely could live without potentially in planning for this, maybe not having a football season. Um, and if you don't have a football season, you're probably not going to have soccer, field hockey, you know, any of those sports as well. So 
Um, it's very, very impactful. Um, and it makes you have to look at, you know, I feel like I'm going back to the eighties maybe <laughs> in my budget and, uh, in the things that I'm going to have to do, but I don't know yet. Um, it's just in my head that it's looking that way, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. And, uh, kind of explain what it was like in the eighties with the budget that you were working with. Yeah. I'll tell you what, um, when I first got to Carolina, and I don't like to be like that person, you know, when I was young, I went through snow and to get here and there and whatever. Um, but uh, what year know, was that? First, our first trip that we took at Carolina, we, you know, we had a station wagon and then my assistants and I drove a minibus to Florida to play in Florida to play in Louisiana. I mean, we drove that and <laughs> it wasn't a bus, it was a mini bus. And so, um, you know, our girls had, you know, it was exciting that they got a pair of sweats. Um, whereas now, you know, you have your Nike contracts, you have your Wilson contracts, you travel by bus, plane, and those type things. Um, very rarely do you go by a van unless it's close by. Um, our budgets, you know, when I first got uh, to Carolina, I mean, our budget, it, it was tough and, you know, did a lot of fundraising and a lot of camp money at that time went into that um, and my assistance. And I still see that as ha having to happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's going to just be a lot of things. I think people are going to have to be creative. And again, every school is going to be different. Um, and some schools have more means right now than others, even in the power five. Um, so they may not be in that situation, but I, I think that we're gonna have to look at, you know, how can you be the most creative, get the most bang for your buck and still serve your student athletes and make their experience a great experience. Cause that's a lot of what it's about. Mm -hmm. you, you talked about having uh, to kind of change your travel schedule. And I feel like you're probably not alone in having to make some of those uh, adjust, adjustments to your travel budget. Uh, do you see that impacting uh, the conferences as a whole uh, to, to try to think of an economic model for all the schools to be able to travel more efficiently and more cost effectively? Uh, yeah, I, I do. Um, I think um, that they're going to have to figure out like i know um i don't know how many years ago it was but you know everybody used to pack all their bags with all of their um uh balls and teas and you know is was there a way and i know this sounds like this is normal now but you know is there a way that you can have the other teams you know supply all the teas and balls for when you get there so you don't have to have that extra baggage fee. Um, and I know that's like so little, but um, at the same time, those add up, you know, those could be thousands of dollars um, in baggage. So if there's ways that you can do that, but I don't know if they'll, you know, change like your, if people have travel partners, if they'll make that a little bit different um, or that will look different. We haven't really had a meeting um, with our conference uh, with the ACC yet. Um, to talk about that. We have our 21 schedule that was put out already. Um, so we know right now who we're supposed to be playing. Um, so, you know, I don't know if that's going to change or not, but that's what I know, you know, right now. Mm -hmm. Given the information that you have today, and I feel like it, it changes every day, every week. Um, Kind of how are how are you approaching the rest of 2020? Uh, well, I think um, you know in terms of in terms of me personally, or me and my program, or you, you and the program. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think um, you know in in having conversations with the girls, um, I think they are going to have to have a lot more. Um, self-discipline and accountability on what they're doing to get prepared to come back and how they're going to handle that and um, 
you know, without having as much guidance um, in the, you know, the physical aspect of training, um, I think they're going to have to rely, um, you know, we, we have to hope and we can continue to encourage them to um, take responsibility for themselves and um, what they want to be and, and how they want to um, affect the program in a positive way. And I, you know, I think uh, trying to stay connected as we can with them as, as much as we can do, but not overwhelming them, um, especially, you know, with a ton of Zoom calls and things like that, um, but encouraging them and, and trying to be as positive as we can, uh, but at the same time, um, letting them know we don't know all the answers right now, um, because certainly all the eligibility things, how that affects you, you know, not just this year, but a few years down the road, because everybody's got their eligibility back and each conference is, you know, acting differently. And um, so I think, you know, trying to remain as normal as possible, but at the same time, making sure we're checking up on them to make sure that they are truly okay, that their families um, are okay, if, you know, any of them are, you know, battling with any of the viruses and um, and how they're coping and, and things like that, I think are really important um, to keep in the forefront as we go forward. Nice. I had a question and it like literally just like floated out of my brain. Um, I'm hoping that it comes back. Uh, this is going to frustrate the heck out of me. I should have wrote it down uh, okay. while you were. You, you have your Texas colors on kind of, right? It kind of, kind of. Yeah. I'm just yeah. trying to be bright and, and bring yeah. the energy. I'm sorry it got a little darker in here. My battery oh. was running low and I had I, to I move figured. Was, so I figured. Sorry. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Um, oh, I do remember. Um, with, you talked about uh, the eligibility. Has the ACC um, kind of granted each university the permission to use the extra year? Yes. Okay. Yes. And what, what challenges has that presented? Um, um, yeah, um, big challenges. Mm -hmm. um, roster size, um, locker space, um, rosters, lockers, um, you know, how, how you practice, um, time, you know, 27 people, 26 people, you know, how, how that all works, travel rosters, um, things cost like more that. money, <laughs> more money. Yeah. I mean, practice clothes, you know, you have maybe a certain allotment, you know, if you're a Nike school, maybe you, you've already done your ordering in October of this year for next year. And, so now you're going to have, you know, more bodies and maybe not everybody's going to get all the same gear, you know, like all of it, because you may have to spread it out a little differently. And so um, lots and lots of, I think, challenges. But again, um, you know, they always say you have to turn a challenge into an opportunity and uh, figure out a way to get it done and make it a, you know, a solution instead of a problem. And so I think you know, we're going to have to figure out how to, how to do all those things. Mm -hmm. But I, it definitely is, is a big, I think a big challenge and a different mindset of, you know, um, you know, people competing to either not be on a, you know, a practice squad per se, or, um, and not to be on the travel roster, I mean, to be on the travel roster versus not. Um, and, you know, you may have to, if you don't have a lot of lockers in your locker room, you may have to share one or somehow we figure out how to get another one in there. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those are all real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Um, just a, a fun question. We talked a lot about um, what's going on with UNC softball, but have you started any quarantine hobbies? Quarantine hobbies? Um not really. I just think I'm able to go right. And again, this may be bad, but I like to ride my bike outside. I have, I have to get outside. Um, and I've probably, um, I've been reading a little bit more or, um, 
you know, doing some things like that, but what not you- any particular hobby. I've, I've, yeah, I've painted some, you know, furniture out on my patio. I've painted a room, um, you know, things like that, planted mm-hmm. some, some more flowers. Um, so those are the kind of things that I've done more of. Mm-hmm. Um, my brain is not working so well today. <laughs> There's something you mentioned and I, it slipped my mind. Um, well, uh, those are those are all all the questions that I have, and I really appreciate you taking the time to to chat with me. I know um, just chatting with you and being able to help uh, parents and players across the country be better informed is so important. And I thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, have a good day. Stay you too. Safe.